Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Topic 9, Lesson 3, Solving Quadratic Equations by Completing the Square. After this lesson, you need to be able to rearrange a quadratic equation in order to complete the square. You need to be able to determine the value added to complete the square. And you need to be able to solve for x in a quadratic equation by completing the square. As a bonus in this lesson too, you might also want to be able to change a quadratic equation from standard form into vertex form. You'll know you're successful after this lesson if you can accurately rearrange a quadratic equation, determine the value to add to both sides of the equation, and solve for the variable by completing the square. Completing the square is our third method for solving for a variable when we have an x to the second power. We saw square roots as our first method, and you're actually going to need that method as part of this one. And then we also saw solving by factor. So here's how completing the square works. First, you're going to isolate the constant on one side of the equation. So you're going to move your constant to the right side so it's away from your variables then you're going to find the missing c value that would create a perfect square trinomial on the left and then add that same c value to both sides of the equation third you're going to factor and write the left side as a binomial squared and then last we're going to solve using the square root method which we learned about in lesson one. So let's get right into looking at some examples of things we need to know for completing a square. So this first example is just asking about what values we would need to add to make a complete square. So what value should be added to the expression below to make a complete square? We have x squared minus 10x plus something. What this means by complete square is that we want to get a binomial to the second power. If you can think back to topic 7, lesson 6, we learned about special cases. A complete square here is going to be the same binomial factors both times. Now, there's a quick and easy way to do this. You're just going to take half of b and square it. So half of b, b was negative 10, half of that is negative 5, and then we're going to make it to the second power. So negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. So 25 is the value that we're going to need to add. We took half of b and squared it. Now, the second part to this says, what is the complete square corresponding to x squared minus 10x? So essentially, why did we just do that? Well, if we take what we just got, now with that plus 25, we have x squared minus 10x plus 25, we can turn this into two binomials that are the same. So if we factored that, we would get x minus 5 both times. That's what we're going for here. It's a square. It's got the same factor lengths both sides. So we can rewrite it instead of being x minus 5 times x minus 5, we can do it x minus 5 to the second power. It's now a binomial squared. So by adding that 25, we were able to change that trinomial into a binomial square, which is what we need to do for completing the square. One thing I do want you to notice is that half of b, that negative 5, ends up being the same value that's inside the parentheses, which can help you figure this out a little quicker. So now it's your turn. Pause the video. Figure out what value should be added to the expression to make it a complete square. And then what is the complete square corresponding to x squared plus 14x? Let's check. You should have found the value added is 49. 
half of 14 is 7, and then 7 times 7 is 49. So you would add 49 to make a complete square. Then what is the complete square corresponding to x squared plus 14x? You should have got x plus 7 to the second power. To get that, we take our trinomial with that plus 49, factor it, we get the same value both times, x plus 7, x plus 7, so x plus 7 to the second power. Again, notice that half of b value is what is in your parentheses. Now let's look at an example where we want to solve for x by completing the square. So we're going to use the same process that we did in the last example. Those were actually part of the first three steps, but we'll see how it actually works here. So we have x squared plus 2x equals 9. First thing we're going to need to do is isolate the constant on the right side. The constant is already on the right side. There's not a constant on the left, so we're good. Next, I'm going to put in two blanks because I need to be able to add a value to the end like we did in the last example. But in order to keep the equation true, we have to do the same thing to both sides. So by putting a line there, that's me reminding myself to do it to both sides. So first I'm going to figure out what value that is. Half of 2 is 1. 1 to the second power, so squaring it, is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And then because we did it to one side, we need to do it to the other. So that's where that step in the last example comes in. Now we're going to turn the left side into that square binomial. So x squared plus 2x plus 1 can factor into x plus 1 and x plus 1. And on the right side, we can just combine those and get 10. Now that x plus 1 times x plus 1 is really x plus 1 squared, and that still equals 10. One quick thing, if we want to change our function into vertex form, so notice we started in standard form, or pretty close to it. If I wanted to change it into vertex form, all you need to do is move the constant back to the other side. So we would have x plus 1 to the second power minus 10. And then just make that equal to y, and you have vertex form. So we'd have x plus 1 to the second power minus 10, and then set that equal to y. We are at vertex form. Or you could move it the y to the front and do y equals that, but it's still the same thing. Now, that's not part of completing the square, but that's how you would do it if you need to. So let's finish completing the square. So now we're going to use the square root method to finish it out. So that would mean taking the square root of both sides and you're left with what's in the parentheses equals the square root of that number. Don't forget when you take the square root of a number, you end up with a positive and negative. So here I showed setting x plus 1 equal to the positive version and to the negative version. Notice I am keeping it as a square root, not changing it to a decimal. It is perfectly okay to do that. So finally to solve for x, I would subtract 1 from both sides. So square root of 10 minus 1. Or on the other one, negative square root of 10 minus 1. Now, one last thing about this. In general, we are going to write the constant first, so that negative 1 would come before the square root. So we can swing it out front and end up with negative 1 plus the square root of 10, negative 1 minus the square root of 10. So here I wrote it with that plus or minus symbol to save me some time. So our final solutions are negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 10. Again, I left the square root just as it was. I did not change it to a decimal. And if you were checking in Desmos, you would type in negative 1 plus the square root of 10 and see if it comes out in the same location or with that same value as if you typed in your original. All right, now it's your turn. Pause the video. 
what values of x would make x squared minus 8x equals negative 4 true? Let's check. You should have got 4 plus or minus the square root of 12. So we start with our original. I'm going to add some lines. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. And then negative 4 squared is 16. So add 16 to both sides. On the left, we have x minus 4 both times. On the right, we can combine those and get 12. So on the left, we end up with x minus 4 squared equals 12. Take the square root of both sides. x minus 4 is the square root of 12. So split it and then add 4 to both of them. Then swing that 4 back out front. And we end up with 4 plus or minus the square root of 12. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. x squared minus 14x plus 3 equals negative 2. So we're going to solve for x again by completing the square. This time, this is our first example we've seen where there is a constant value on the left. We have that plus 3 that's on the left side of the equal sign. So we need to move it to the right. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And then I'm just going to kind of leave a space there because I know I'm going to just need to draw a blank there anyway. So x squared minus 14x equals now negative 5. So if we draw our blanks in there, half of 14 is 7, so negative 7. Negative 7 to the second power is positive 49, so I need to add that to both sides. If you haven't noticed yet, the number that you are adding to both sides is always positive. You are adding it. Even if half of your number is negative, still negative to the second power makes it positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. All right, from there, we're going to factor the left side and combine the right. So x minus 7 to the second power now equals 44. Take the square root of both sides. x minus 7 is now the square root of 44. Split it into the positive and negative value. So x minus 7 is positive square root of 44, and x minus 7 is negative square root of 44. Then, to solve for x, we would add 7 to both sides. So we would get x equals square root of 44 plus 7, and negative square root of 44 plus 7. Swing that 7 out front. x is equal to 7 plus or minus the square root of 44. Now it's your turn again. Pause the video. Solve for the quadratic here by completing the square. Let's check. You should have got negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 2. Let's see how we get that. First, subtract 17 from both sides. That way it's gone off the left. Then we can leave a blank. So x squared plus 6x plus something is equal to negative 7 plus something. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 to the second power is 9. So we would end up with x plus 3 times x plus 3 equals 2, or x plus 3 squared equals 2. Taking the square root, we get x plus 3 equals the square root of 2. Splitting it, x plus 3 equals positive square root of 2, and x plus 3 equals negative square root of 2. So to finally finish it out, subtract 3 from both sides, and then you're going to just swing that out front anyway. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 2. Now let's look at one last example. For the most part, the steps of this are going to be the same. There is just one thing that you're going to need to look out for at the very beginning, and it is seen in this example. Here we have 3x squared minus 12x plus 24 equals 18. So in this one, 
unlike all of the other examples, our a value, that first number in front of x squared, is not 1. It's 3 here. So if the a value is not 1, you have one extra step right at the very beginning, and you need to divide everything by that number. So hopefully, all of your numbers are divisible by that number out front, or this could get very messy. Now it'll still work if it's messy, you're just gonna have to be a lot more careful. So here, we're lucky, we can divide everything by three. When we do that, we get x squared minus four x plus eight equals six. Now, once a is back to one, we can use completing the square. So I'm gonna subtract eight from both sides, that way my constant is on the right. Put my blanks there. So x squared minus four x plus something equals negative two plus that same thing. Half of four is two, two to the second power is four. So I'm gonna add four to both sides. Now I'm gonna work my way through. So x minus two times x minus two equals two. So x minus two to the second power equals two. Take the square root of both sides, I get x minus two equals the square root of two. Finally, after adding two from both sides to get rid of it on the left, I would end up with two plus or minus the square root of two. If you're confused on how I got some of the last few steps, look back at previous examples where I added in the actual doing of the steps. So now it's your turn one last time. Pause the video. Solve this quadratic by completing the square. Let's check. You should have got negative one plus or minus the square root of 19. Let's look at how to get that. First, a is not one. So you need to divide everything by what a is. Here it's two. So we get x squared plus 2x minus 10 equals 8. Then add 10 to both sides so it's gone off the left. Fill in the blank. Half of 2 is 1, so 1 times 1 is 1. Which gives us x plus 1 and x plus 1 equals 19. So x plus 1 squared is 19. Taking the square root of both sides, x plus 1 is equal to the square root of 19. Finally, if we subtract 1 from both sides, we end up with negative 1, and then plus or minus square root of 19. In this lesson, we learned about a third method of solving quadratics called completing. So it's a method that always works, unlike factoring and unlike square roots. However, it can be rather difficult if the numbers don't work nicely. For example, if a was five, like we saw in the last example there, when a was three or a was two, if the other numbers aren't divisible by a, now you're gonna end up with some fractions or some decimals in your problem that you have to deal with. So it can get pretty messy. When we're completing the square, first divide by a if it's not one, then get the constant alone, so you're left with our format x squared plus bx plus something equals opposite of c. It may be helpful at that point to add a line on both sides, so you can remember that you need to add to both sides. It is a common mistake that you don't, so that might be helpful. Next, figure out what value to add to both sides. It will be half of b, then squared. Finally, rewrite the equation as a binomial square that's equal to a constant. And side note that we saw in the second example, if you move the constant back off the right side into the side with the binomial squared, you actually just turned your standard form back into vertex form, which is that format there. So once you have your binomial square equals a number, then use the square root method to solve for the zeros. So you're taking the square root of both sides, 
setting it equal to the positive and negative, and solving for x. So after this lesson, do you now know how to accurately rearrange quadratic equations? So that's where we were moving things around from one side to the other. Do you know how to determine what value to add to both sides of the equation? And do you know how to solve for the variable by completing the square? And also as a bonus, would you know how to change standard form into vertex form? If you're not sure about these things, go back and look at some of the examples, where the numbers are coming from, why certain things are done to help deepen your understanding of these things. And that's the end of lesson three on solving quadratic equations by completing the square.